What's up guys, in this video, what I wanna do is go through like what is the difference between solving a system, to, system of equations using substitution method as well as the elimination method. Because one thing that students, you know, kind of commonly ask me is like, which method should I use? Like, how do I know which method is the best method? And, you know, is one method easier than the other? And for some equations, yes, one method is going to be preferred. Now, in this example, um, actually, you could probably make the case that one, that neither method is really going to be the better. It is going to kind of come up to um, your kind of choice, you know, what you kind of view as like what would be easier or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to solve these both by using the elimination as well as the substitution method. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of work these win um, steps. And what we're going to do is just kind of focus on like, what would be the first step if we we're going to do elimination? And what would be the first step if we we're going to do substitution? So the first step for elimination is you got to get coefficients to be exactly the same. All right, so what I want you to recognize here is that I have coefficients for my x are 3 and 2, and the coefficients for my y are a negative 1 and a 3. So the coefficients are not exactly the same. And remember, if things are not aligned, then you'd want to make sure that you have x's over x's, y's over y's, right? And everything's kind of like just nice vertically aligned. So what we want to do is going to have to use what we call a scalar multiple. Now, um, we preferably only want to use like the, the only one if we have to. Sometimes there are problems where you have to use two. But in this case, I want you to recognize if I multiply this top equation by three, what that's going to do now is that's going to now give me a, because remember, you have to multiply everything right by that top equation. So um, if you multiply three times everything on that top equation, then you now have a coefficient of a negative three. And that's gonna be the same value, absolute value, right? We have a negative three and a positive three, that's good, because those are the same number, right? One's positive, one's negative. But now I can go ahead and apply my um, substitution. So the first step I'm gonna do is actually going to be to multiply um, multiply my equations so I can get a um, common, or multiply my equations by a scalar so I can get a um, two equations that have a common coefficient. Okay, so now you can just see all I did was I distributed that three to both those equations, and then that's exactly what I need to do. Now, in the first step for the substitution method, what I want you to be able to see is you need to be able to isolate either an X or a Y. And typically, I always tell students, like, whenever you have a coefficient of one, um, then use substitution. But you could also make that case if you have a coefficient of a negative one. Um, because if you have a coefficient here of a negative one, then it's not too bad to solve this. Like if I have this 3x minus y equals 7, like if I just need to solve for y, uh, all I got to do is add the 7 and then subtract the, I'm sorry, add the y on both sides and subtract the 7 on both sides. And now I have isolated my variable. And that's all we're looking for in terms of the substitution method. So the first step is just to go ahead and isolate your variable. Okay, so now you can see that I have isolated the variable, right? And so I've solved for y. Now again, sometimes students are like, which variable should you isolate for? Like, again, you wanna isolate the variable that has a coefficient either of a one or of a negative one. And if you don't have either of those cases, then I would probably recommend substitution. It's not gonna be the method for you. You could always do it, but it just takes a little bit more work. All right, now let's go ahead and move on to step number two. So that was the first step. Step number two for elimination is just going to be to simply add your two equations up, right? By adding the two equations up, when they have the same coefficient, one negative and one positive, you're now gonna get a zero for a coefficient. If they are both the exact same number, like a three y and a positive three y, then you'd have to subtract your two equations um, to do that. So in this case, now I can just add my two equations up and look what happens. 9x plus um, 2x is going to be an 11x. Negative 3y plus 3y is going to be a 0y, which again, is just going to be 0. I don't really need to add a plus 0. So then I'm just going to write this now as going to equal to an 8. Uh, oh, I forgot to multiply the 3 times the 7, right? <laughs> Oops. So make sure you guys go ahead and distribute that. Um, that's going to be a 21. Okay, so that's going to be a 22. Make sure you guys are being careful with your work. Okay, so that's going to be a 22. All right, so that was going to be um, step number two here. And then once we go ahead and adding them, yeah, we'll get to that in a second. Now for step number two for elimination, now what we're going to do is we're going to take this value that we saw for y, right? And we're going to plug that into the other equation. So again, we know y is equal to a 3x minus 7. So when I rewrite my back my original equation, I have a 2x plus a 3 now what I can do is rewrite now my substituted form here, which is a 3x minus 7, right? And then that's going to equal a 1. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking my first equation that I saw for y, and I'm plugging that into the second equation for y, right? Instead of 3 times y, it's now 3 times the expression 3x minus 7y. Okay, so that's step number two for each one of those. And then step number three now is going to be to solve for x. So let's go back to 
now to go ahead and solve for X. You can see this one's going to be a lot easier here, right? All I got to do now is divide by 11 on both sides and X is going to equal two. over here. I'm going to have to apply a little distributive property. So I get a two X plus a nine X minus a 21 equals one here. Let's go into B. That's an 11 X. Um, add the 21 to both sides. And let's see here. Now you're going to get a, um, so 11 X is equal to a 22. And then again, we already know that was the same equation we already had over there, right? So X is going to equal to a two. Okay. So a little bit more work over here, right? Um, the multi, the scalar kind of sometimes gets a little difficult sometimes on the front end, um, identifying like the LCD to get to that. But then here, once we did the substitution, we had a little bit more work, but now here's where substitution kind of takes the cake. Because remember when we're solving a system of equations, we're looking for the X as well as for the Y variable. So now what we need to do is plug in our value of X um, and to go ahead and solve for Y. So you now we're in, on the elimination method, you have to plug in an two and for X for one of these top equations. And it doesn't really matter which one you want to do. I would probably choose the top equation um, from this one, just because it's probably a little bit less work here to go ahead and to go ahead and solve for Y. But for substitution, look at the nice thing about substitution, right? I already have Y solve for. So now all I simply need to do is plug a two in for the X and I'm done, right? So, I mean, that's kind of nice. So it's a three times. Let's just plug in this two here, two minus seven. And therefore we have three minus two is going to be a six, six minus one, seven is going to be a negative one. So Y is equal to a negative one. So now we have our coordinate point, which is our final answer, which is going to be two comma negative one. Now over here, we could go back and cheat and say, Hey, we already solved for Y, right? Uh, but let's not cheat. Let's go ahead and plug it into one. Just make sure that we're going to do everything correctly. Because again, I want to show to you that it doesn't matter what method you use, substitution or elimination. So um, what was that original? So it was a three um, times, let's go and plug in this two here. All right, and then three times two, and that's gonna be minus a y is equal to a seven. Okay, so now we just need to solve for y. So in this case, we have a six minus y is equal to seven, and then you just go ahead and subtract a six on both sides. Negative y is equal to one divided by negative one divided by negative one. Y is equal to a negative one. And again, guys, we're going to get the exact same points here. Two comma a negative one. So hopefully, ladies and gentlemen, this kind of made some sense identifying the difference between substitution and elimination. Again, I would highly recommend whenever you already have a variable that's already has a positive one, then use the substitution method. If you already have an equation where you have coefficients for both of your x and your y's, it's probably going to be better to do the elimination method. On this problem, I don't know. What do you think was the easier method? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you want more examples of solving system equations, then check out the next video I have for you here.